In the last mo module, we dropped the assumption of the linear effects of the predictors on the outcome. Uh, and now we're going to uh, move towards uh, dropping the assumption of the additive effects of the predictors to predict the outcome. So basically the, the usual structural additive form of the uh, F uh, estimator, estimator for the F function. So we're going to talk about uh, cards, uh, classification and the regression trees, um, and some techniques associated with the trees, including pruning, bagging and random forests. So we'll start in this uh, in this section with regression and classification trees. So uh, trees can be used for regression problems, so when the outcome is continuous, or also for classification problem when the outcome is uh, categorical. Okay, and what the trees uh, do is basically they stratify and segment the predictor space created by the predictors. Um, the advantage of the trees is that they are quite easy to interpret but they will tend to be, to, to be uh, highly variable in terms of uh, uh, predictions, meaning that a small change in the data can cause a very different uh, tree and, a, and, a, and quite different predictor. So we'll see uh, later in the module that bagging and random forests address this problem of uh, high variability. Okay, so a, a tree is constituted by uh, uh, nodes and uh, branches. Uh, so here on the right side, we have a classification tree, classification because, you know, the predictions, the outcomes here at, at the bottom are classes, are categories one, two or three. And uh, the tree uh, at each node uh, has a, a predictor and uh, a decision that splits that predictor. For example, in this case, for predictor X1, if the X1 is less than five, we go to the left side of the tree. If it's higher than five, you go to the right side, okay? And then on the right side, have another predictor, X3, that seems to be categorical. Um, and so if X3 is equal to, the pr prediction is the outcome is going to be one. If it's different uh, than two, then we still have another variable involved that still splits into uh, two more branches. So this split, the, the splits, uh, of the nodes in, in the two branches are done according to some loss functions. Let me go back to an example that we've seen before, the example of uh, bolt densitometries. So the dataset BMD contains uh, about 170 um, bone mineral density measurements. Um, and for each one of the, the patients, we have age, fracture, height. And in this case, we want to um, predict bone mineral density. Uh, of the individual based in some of, of uh, its um, characteristics. Okay, so let's uh, then focus on the bone mineral density and one single uh, predictor age, and let's build a regression tree. A regression tree because bone mineral density is a, a continuous outcome. So we're going to start by finding a, a cutoff for the predictor age that separates the sample in two groups that minimize some loss function. And for regression trees, the common loss function uh, is given by this expression here, so this uh, sum of uh, uh, sort of residual squares, where R1 and R2 are the two regions created by the, cu the, the, the cutoff on H. So uh, Y bar R1 is going to be the uh, average of the bone mineral density for individuals below that cutoff or a certain cutoff and uh, y bar r2 is going to be the average of bone mineral density for individuals above that cutoff okay so basically i want to find uh, in this first split uh, the cutoff that really minimizes this loss, loss function so if um, we consider the cutoff of 55 let's say uh, I have represented here, so the, um, the sum of the squares, the, the loss function would be, uh, would give me the value of 4.57, okay? So this blue line is the mean of the individuals uh, above uh, 55, and the red line is the average of the, the bone mineral density for individual below uh, uh, 55, okay? So what is, what is the cutoff that minimizes uh, this loss function. So we can look through the, the range of age and for each cutoff really compute the loss function. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here. And 
we can see that at the age 70.8, 70 so approximately 71, uh, we have the 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 minimum uh, the the minimum value for the loss function which is 3.96 okay so that that would be my first cutoff uh, for age and uh, here in the tree i have represented then initially the 100 percent of the sample so i have 72 percent of the individuals are below 72 uh, 71 years old and 28 percent are above uh, um, 71 years old and the other value gives me the average of the bone mineral density okay uh, so for the the younger individuals bone mineral density is 0.82 for the older individuals is 0.78 so once i have this uh, first split i'll go on and i'll apply the same principle to the two regions created by the split so now i have these individuals below age of 71 and i'm going to, to minimize the loss function try to find a cutoff here that minimizes the loss function in this region and the same for the region two and if i do that i'll see that uh, the, that cutoff in region one it's going to be approximately around 46 it seems and on region two is about 73 okay so this will split uh, the, the 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 nodes that we already had created before into additional uh, branches so i have here the bmd for this subgroup of individuals this subgroup of, of individuals are individuals uh, that are between 71 and 73 so it's corresponds to this this subgroup here this subgroup of individuals are individuals um, ab above 73 uh, uh, years old and they have a, a, predic a prediction uh, predicted bmd given by the, the mean of PMD in this group, which is 0 0.07, okay, and so on. So I could continue and now split this subgroup and continue to split subgroup. And I can actually do that up to the point where I have one individual at the end of each node, okay? But obviously this would be overfitting the data. This, this tree is clearly too, too long. Um, and it's it's uh, overfitting in the sense that it's really optimized to classify correctly every individual in the sample but it will um, have a poor generalization because it's really tuned for the sample so a better uh, a better principle would be to have some pruning technique where you could cut some branches of the tree uh, and have a tree that is more generalizable so that really that is not overfitting the data okay we'll see later how to do this now let's consider the situation where we have uh, two or more predictors and the idea is still similar but at each node rather than just evaluating what's the best cutoff for one predictor i'll evaluate all the cutoffs across all the predictors and choose the the predictor and the, and the respective cutoff that minimizes loss function okay so here i have uh, weight and age so two predictors for bo bone mineral density and we had seen that age had an initial uh, cutoff at the age of 71 that uh, had a value for lo loss function of uh, uh, 3.96 and you can say you can see that the weight is a cutoff uh, that is uh, lower um, than the, the the value for the the loss function for the variable uh, age okay so the first uh, the first split would be based on uh, the, the the variable weight because it has the lowest value for loss function so we would make the cutoff uh, on the value 66 and once i have those two regions um, i would then proceed for the next uh, split again evaluating both predictors age and weight and seeing which one minimizes now the loss function within each one of the regions and go on okay and this will create me if you want to see the split in, in uh, three dimensions it would create uh, different uh, sections of um, um, the, the the space generated by the, the predictors in this case age and weight So we you can implement uh, the the trees with the library R R part in R um, with the R part function that has a syntax very similar to uh, GLM and uh, G and GAM um, and 
the only thing that we have to specify there's actually several things that we, we can specify but one thing that you should specify is the method that indicates if you have uh, a regression tree or a classification tree so in this case by stating the method is ANOVA basically I'm saying BMD is a continuous so the, the correct loss function uh, to be used is the one that we've seen before okay this uh, this other method so class would be the one for uh, uh, classification trees and this also has been extended to survival analysis so you could also have some survival data here so here you have um, a, a tree um, for BMD using the, the, the variables uh, age and weight let me now talk about pruning this idea of cutting down branches from the tree that uh, might be overfitting the data or might not be helping in terms of uh, uh, prediction ability of the, the tree so I have I'm going back to the example um, using one single predictor age to predict bone mineral density and I have here uh, start growing my tree and splitting branches and the question is when should I stop how far should I uh, go uh, with the grow growing of the tree so one intuitive criterion could be that I only split at a node if I have a, a gain in terms of the the predicted ability of the tree again that justifies the splitting so that that uh, uh, predictive ability of the tree could be um, translated into the mean square error or the residual sum of squares um, so I would only make the split if I ha really have a, a contribution uh, uh, meaningful to the mean square error uh, with a split the issue with this uh, approach is that as this example for example in the in the tree indicates I could be uh, stopping the growth of the tree uh, too early so we have here a split that doesn't seem to separate a lot in terms of bone mineral density so I create I have these two groups with very similar uh, uh, means which was going to, to lead to uh, not an improvement in the mean square error but if I grow the, the, the tree a little bit more I start having splits that actually contribute um, will contribute to, to the decrease in mean square error okay so uh, as I said although intuitive this criteria might be this criterion might be stopping the growth of the tree, tree too early so instead of doing this what we'll be doing is to grow the tree long enough and then prune it uh, so cut down uh, 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 branches according to the cost complexity criterion and the cost, cost complexity criterion uses a very similar idea uh, as the ones we've used before in case of regularization and also um, uh, smoothing splines uh, which is penalization so we have uh, the, the residual sum of squares of the the tree given by this expression here and we want to obviously minimize this and we've seen that you know you can actually grow the tree uh, so much that you have um, each end node it's going to be the observation itself so I can overfit the data and, and have uh, uh, a zero in terms of residual sum of squares but I want to minimize this and but penalize uh, penalized by the complexity of the tree okay so I'm going to have this component um, which is uh, uh, T that is the number of nodes in the tree so the more nodes means the tree is going to be more complex less nodes less complex and the penalization is going to be tuned by this parameter alpha and as before we're going to use cross validation uh, to uh, find the the best alpha and the best alpha is uh, it's going to indicate the pruning um, the pruning that I have to do to, to the to the to the tree so in the example we're using age to determine to predict BMD I have here the full the 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 full tree the complete tree the most of the software is not actually going to compute the entire tree it's not necessarily to go uh, to grow the, t the tree so large usually they have some criteria to stop a bit earlier but then they're going to by cross validation compute the uh, root mean square error or mean square error associated with the, the different alphas and you can see here that uh, the the best alpha or the alpha with lowest root mean square error is somewhere around 0 0.02 it seems 
uh, and that corresponds to this very simple tree um, indicated here, just with one, one, uh, one, sp one split. Okay, so according to the cross validation criteria for the uh, cost complexity uh, function, um, it's this is, is the, the tree with, um, with um, uh, best root mean square error. Now, for classification trees, the idea is exactly the same, uh, but now we are uh, uh, predicting a categorical outcome instead of uh, a continuous outcome as the regression trees. And because of that, we are going to use a different loss function. Um, for uh, categorical uh, outcomes, for classification trees, there's, there's usually two common uh, loss functions that can be used, the Gini index, um, defined by 1 minus the sum of the probabilities uh, computed by at each, each node um, and the information gain which is based on um, um, entropy um, of the of the tree okay so the Gini index tends to favor largest uh, larger uh, partitions where, where the information gain uh, favors uh, s smaller parti partitions, but with we, we unique uh, values. Okay, um, I believe the default in the software that we're going to use our part is the Gini in index. So still in the example of the uh, BMD dataset, and we've done a similar exercise with the uh, Keynes neighborhood to predict fracture. We want to grow a tree to predict fracture using bone mineral density, BMI, and sex. Okay, and again, similar to the regression uh, trees, we're going to grow a tree long enough and then prune it to the to the criteria that we've defined before. And here I have the code using the caret uh, function uh, that it's going to uh, call the R part. Um, package and use the R part, uh, R part fun function uh, and I'm going to use for the split criteria the Gini, uh, Gini uh, index okay and we can see that the best cost complexity parameter is, is 0 0.01 uh, in this case we, we're using the ROC curve um, to and not the mean square error right given that we have a, a, a categorical outcome. And again, this leads to this very simple uh, tree that uses BMD less than 0.71 as the only sp split. And the ROC curve associated with that, this tree is 0.87. So this is the overview of, about the construction of classification and regression trees. Uh, the trees are, uh, have several advantages. Um, they are very easy to interpret and they are quite flexible in the estimation of the f function that we've mentioned before this function that relates the predictors with the outcome um, it's also has embedded a variable selection uh, in, in the in the in the method itself so when at each node where we evaluate uh, what variable uh, we're going to use for the split if a variable is not contrib contributing for the prediction of the outcome is never going to be selected so the the, the method itself has embedded a variable selection it's not affected by um, transformations uh, of the variables as long as they are monotonous it's it, the the flexibility um, extends to handling complex interactions between the, the predictors. Actually, that's exactly what the, the trees are, are you know, really complex interactions between the, 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 the variables that are trying to predict the outcome. And also, it's quite robust to uh, uh, highly correlated uh, uh, predictors, okay? So it's not affected by collinearity. But the biggest uh, disadvantage of trees is that despite uh, producing unbiased predictions, they, uh, these predictions are highly variable. Uh, as I said in the beginning uh, of, the, of the video, small changes in the data can lead to uh, very different trees and uh, eventually uh, different predictions. Okay, so we'll see next how we can stabilize this variability using bagging and finally random, uh, random forests.